Hey guys, and welcome back to the Spruce and Linen channel. I'm Janelle, and today we're talking about two structural stitches, the hem stitch and twining. Now, we have done tutorials on both of these stitches before. However, we've gotten a lot of feedback lately that they aren't really zoomed in enough for those of you who are watching on a phone. So we decided that we would just redo it so that we're really nice and zoomed in. So everyone has all the options and then it's nice that this one has both in one because there are kind of different ways that you can use both of them in one weaving so let's get started this video is brought to you by the spruce and linen shop where you can find weaving looms kits tools and supplies link in the description box below the first stitch we're going to talk about is twining I love twining this is like I said a really structural stitch it locks those warp strings in place and it's my current favorite way of starting a weaving. So it's really nice when you put in a locking stitch like this um, into your weaving, especially at the beginning, is that when you take your weaving off the loom, those warp strings aren't going to slip up and down as much. So once the tension is off, because you have taken it off the loom, it's not going to slip around as much as if you didn't put a twining stitch. So I used to always just start my weavings with a uh, plain weave. Then you have to be way more conscious when you're taking it off the loom that things are going to shift around a bit and you probably are going to have to do more measuring um, to make sure everything is straight. But with twining, you can really lock everything into place and it won't slip around near as much. The way that I personally love to do twining is with two tapestry needles and then two pieces of yarn. So I'm just going to measure out let's say about four, well, we'll do about four widths. And I'm going to get another piece. Now this piece, I'm going to do a little bit longer because I'm going to use this just for some plain weave above. So I'm going to thread one of my tapestry, both of my tapestry needles, one with the longer piece and one with the shorter piece. Now it doesn't really matter whether you start with the short piece or the long piece. Um, it's not going to matter in the end. It'll matter kind of after we're done the twining. All right, so for the twining, the way that I like to do twining is I go in with my first needle and you just do plain weave. So that's tabby over one string, under one string, the most basic form of weaving. And you can just lay that there, leave yourself a tail to tuck in later. So now we're going to start doing the twining and I'm going to start on the same side that this tail is on. So both of my tails will be on the same side. Now basically with twining, all that you're going to do is anywhere that the yarn is going over a warp string. So here's an example right here. We are going to be going under and through with our other yarn. Now that we have the yarn under that first warp string, we're going to start twining it through. So again, the yarn is going over this warp string. So we are going to go from kind of top to bottom at an angle under that warp string and the yarn and then through. And pull your yarn all the way through. And it does take like a few rows for this to kind of start tightening up. And you will need to sort of adjust your warp strings to make sure that they're spreading out evenly, but we can keep adjusting later. So again, we're not doing anything with this warp string because our yarn is going under. We're going to the next one where the yarn is going over and we're going down, under, and through, just like that. You can see that I'm gonna keep tightening this up and I'm also going to keep making sure that my warp strings are staying an even amount of, apart and we're not bowing out here too much. And then we're gonna repeat that again. So skipping this string and going to this one, which is going over the warp string and we're going under the warp string, under the yarn. So we're always just working on one warp string there and then pull it through. And then continuing that process again. So skipping this warp string, 
and going down, under, and through the next. And again, skipping that warp string, down, under, through. So I'm going to finish the rest of this row and then we will start going the opposite direction. So now that we're at the end of the row, we're going to pick up our other tapestry needle again. So for me, that's my walnut tapestry needle here. And by the way, I get questions about this a lot, so I'm just gonna pause and say this. These tapestry needles are exclusive to my spruce and linen brand. I make them myself and you can um, find them in the shop and there will always be a link for my shop in the description box below. All right, so picking up this other needle, so it's the one I started with, but it really doesn't matter which one you go with. But now I'm going to do plain weave again. So I'm just going opposite of what the previous row was. So I can see that this string, this yarn was going under this warp string. So this time I'm going to go over and just do a simple plain weave again. And again, just checking that everything's nice and tight. And here as well, we came over with that one. So we are going to go down, under, and through this warp, first warp string. I'll just pause so you can see that, so I'll do it again. So this far left warp string and under the yarn here. So basically what I'm doing on this row, I know it can be kind of confusing once you turn around and are going the opposite direction, but to just kind of clear it up, what I do is that when I'm going right to left, I'm using my right hand, and when I'm going left to right, I'm using my left hand. So now we're skipping this, just like as if you were weaving as well, right? You'd go back and forth, right to left. Now, here the yarn is going over our warp string, so I'm going down, under, and through. So now our angle of our needle is kind of going from left to right versus when we were going this direction and it was kind of like this. So down, under, and through. Pull all that yarn through and just tighten everything up. And again, skipping this warp string and going to this one where the yarn is going over it and then we're going down, under, and through. Now, like everything, there is more than one way to do this. I just really personally have a strong preference for using tapestry needles for twining versus doing it um, by hand. But of course, there are other ways, and in the other twining stitch tutorial, I do show you how to do it um, just using your hands instead of needles if you would prefer trying that out, and I'll put a link um, right here for you to check that one out. All right, so again, our yarn is going over this warp string, so we're going down, under, through. Tighten it up and go to the next one. So I'm gonna continue this all the way across and then you can see what it looks like when it's finished. All right, so now we are finished and you can see that we have this like very sumac looking stitch here. So it looks like a little braid and, but this stitch versus just a regular sumac is much more, like I said, a locking stitch. So you can see that what it does here, once we have it all tightened up, is our warp strings aren't really like sliding around now, which is super handy, um, again, for the start and finish of your weaving, but also for when you wanna create negative space. So if you wanted to kind of leave a gap right here in your weaving, let's say, and you're trying to create some negative space, you could leave that gap, have a twining at the bottom as well as the top, and then that would just kind of lock everything in place so that it doesn't wanna like slide around once it's off the loom. Now, a hem stitch is also really good for that and in some ways might even be better for that scenario just because what a hem stitch does, and you'll see it in a little bit here, is it's actually sewn to the other weft strings in your weaving and it locks in the um, warp strings as well. So it's just a couple different techniques and I always encourage you to play around with all kinds of things and see what works well for you and what you like the look of better because the nice thing about twining is twining is a really pretty stitch as well. 
And hemstitch is pretty in its own way, um, but it's not as kind of uniform, I guess, as twining. So now all that I'm going to do is I'm going to do a few rows of plain weave here and then we're going to work on the hem stitch. So I'm going to take about oh, more than three widths of my piece here. I'm not entirely sure what the proper measurement is um, in regards to how much yarn you need for your hem stitch, but I just want to make sure that I have a lot because the worst thing would be to get kind of partway through and not have enough. So again, I'm going to flip my weaving over and I like to do my hem stitch from left to right. So I'm going to tuck in my yarn through this little channel here. And I'm gonna leave a little tail cause I might wanna tuck it in even more after. So I'm just gonna leave that like this for now. Then what we're going to do is I'm going to be doing my hem stitch um, with two warp strings at a time. So we're kind of bundling two at a time. You could do more, just keep in mind you don't wanna do too many at a time because what it's gonna start to do is kind of crush the top of your weaving there, but you could do, you know, in this case up to three would probably be okay. So we're going to start by going under two warp strings, like so. And then we're going to go under two again, but this time we're going to come up through weft strings. So I'm going to go through two weft strings. So I'm going under the same two, I'm saying two a lot. Okay, so I'm going under the same two warp strings and then I'm coming th up through my weft string. So there's two above my needle. So we're gonna pull that through and just pull it tight and that kind of locks it in. So we're going to do that again. Under two, pull it around and then under those same two, but now we're coming up through our weft strings. Again, I'm leaving two above my needle. And then I'm pulling that tight. Again, under two, under two again, but now coming up through our weft strings and then pulling it all tight. Under two. Under two again. And then through our two weft strings. So once again, we are going under two, under two again, but now again, I'm putting my needle through the weft string so that there's two above my needle and then pulling it tight. So now we are at the end, so we're going to go under these two and then we're actually going to go flip this around. So I went, I went back behind those two warp strings again, but now you're going to flip this around and then tuck in your ends and pull it tight. So now we are finished our hem stitch. Now I am noticing, and I could have re redone this, but I am noticing, you know, we are kind of missing that look of the string kind of coming over right here because that's where we started. And this wouldn't be a problem if we were using the same color of yarn, but since we're not, it's kind of noticeable and it looks a little bit off to me. So I'm going to see if we can just simply 
See, and this is why I left myself a tail, just in case. So I just untucked that tail, and I'm wondering if I can sort of tuck it in a way that it looks like it was part of the hem. So, how am I going to do that? I think I'm gonna go down through here. And I think like, I know that's not perfect, but that does look better to me than without it being there at all. So I just kind of tucked it in there. And now I can flip this over. And in this case, because my tail is kind of short, I'm going to tuck in my needle first. Then I'm going to thread it. And pull that yarn through. And then now I can trim off this end. And same here, we already tucked in that end. So I can just kind of trim it off. And that is your hem stitch. So you can see that it can add a little bit of a design element at the top of your weaving. Again, if you had done this in the same color um, as your actual weaving piece, then it would blend in a lot more and it will simply just be a way to kind of group two warp strings. Now, a couple of things, depending on how you're wanting to finish your weaving will kind of depend on what stitch you use at the top. At the bottom of your weaving, I'm always going to recommend a twining because it is just something to lock it in. It's not as time consuming as the hem stitch. And so I just find that better for the bottom of a weaving. And you don't even have to do two rows of the hem stitch at the bottom of your weaving if you don't want to. Um, it's more for looks to do two rows and have it sort of give that braid look that we have going on here. Um, but if you are finishing your weaving by hanging it from the actual loops of your warp strings, then I would definitely say the hem stitch is a good option for finishing it because it's kind of grouping them off in two and then you can hang, you know, your dowel, let's say our, I'm just gonna slide this down. Let's say our weaving actually finished at the top here. We've already got these strings um, grouped together and you could just slide your dowel through the top. So that's a really good option for that. However, if you are planning on sewing on the dowel, so you're going to knot your warp strings, tuck them in, and then use another string to sew on a dowel, I will put a link right here for a video tutorial where I do that method. Um, in that case, I would definitely recommend the twining at the top. So the reason for this is, again, the hem stitch is kind of a bit decorative, um, as well as it's adding sort of this extra knobby layer at the top and when you tie your knots you're going to end up tucking it all in the back anyway so this is where i prefer the twining stitch when i'm going to be knotting off the top of my weaving so then you can knot you know two warp strings at a time and you can tuck them back in the ends and what's nice about the twining stitch is it's actually adding some bulk so that when you tuck in those ends, you're not going to see your knot and it's gonna hide everything really nice and just be a really clean finish at the top. So that's just a couple of my recommendations and how I kind of choose which one to use. Again, the hem stitch can sort of be a design element, especially if you're using a contrasting color. Um, there's, there's so many different options and I know that can be really overwhelming sometimes, but just try different things and think about the way that you're wanting to finish your piece and then decide what stitch to use based on that. So I hope this was a really helpful video. I know that, um, again, some of our older videos aren't as zoomed in as they are now. So um, bear with us as we sort of um, go back to some of those same tutorials and bring them again, hopefully in a bit of a different way than the last one. So we're kind of hitting on all points. All right, you guys, so that is how to do a twining stitch as well as a hem stitch. Like I said, both are really great structure stitches. They lock in your warp string and they are a great way, like I said, to use in a piece where you're trying to create negative space. So if you wanted to start another section of weaving up here, you could easily do that and then do another hem stitch, but upside down, you could do it with twining. There's so many different options and I hope this video was helpful. And if you like this video, please hit that like button, subscribe and click the bell to get notifications when I post new videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.